Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at another one of Snowman's finest creations. This is the uh, Snowman. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the uh, the Snowman uh, Radiator CPU. Yeah, not entirely sure myself what the actual real name of it is. This was actually sent to us uh, from one of our patrons and also regular YouTubes and one of our Discorders. This is from Ugly Bob who sent it. So thank you very much, Ugly Bob, once again for sending us a product to review. And uh, yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that he actually sent me the link of actually where this came from on AliExpress, I would be none the wiser about any of it. So as you can see on the packaging at the front, it says it is the Radiator CPU. And also, um, yep, yeah, it's compatible with that, that, and that. Yeah, no idea whatsoever. And also it is made by possibly these people here. Um, it does seem to say Suiyu Feng Shen. Could be completely wrong. If it is, please do let me know in the comment section. Please put it in there phonetically so I know how to say it properly in the future. On the top of the box, it says uh, also again, radiator CPU. So yeah, we know it's some sort of cooling device for sure, but we're not entirely sure what it is. Uh, on the side, we've got some more information. Um, it does say Intel LGA775, Core2 Duo, LGA1150, 1151, uh, and some other things underneath that label. Essentially, it basically fits pretty much all of the Intel sockets, apart from the kind of the crazy ones for some of the LGA 2011s, I think it is. And also it seems to fit pretty much every single AMD socket there ever was, apart from possibly AM1. And obviously some of the really, really old stuff, but essentially if you're on either FM1, FM2, AM2, 3, 4, you're pretty much good to go, which is excellent news. Oh, and actually socket 939 and 940, let's not leave those out of the mix. And actually probably a few others that use that same mounting retention system. Um, on this side, it's got some more information, which, uh, yeah, is basically has, uh, yeah, nothing ticked on it. So this is basically from Snowman. It is a dual fan RGB cooler with dual 92mm heat stacks, and it uses six, yep, yeah, six heat pipes. So let's take a close look at what we get inside the packaging. So obviously... You get the Intel mounting ring, which is uh, pretty ubiquitous these days. You get these in pretty much everything. Also, there are some plastic push pins to actually aid with that mounting system. And also, nice to see there is a little bit of Hollenzai or Hallenzi uh, soft thermal compound. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty handy. We won't be using that in this particular test. I'm going to be using probably the Ions paste or maybe some Arctic MX4 just to see what this thing can really do when we stretch its legs. And talking of stretching legs, let's take a look and see what we actually get. So the packaging actually, we're pretty sure it came from China. Uh, Bob, let us know in the comments, I'm pretty sure it did originate from China. I wish I had the packaging now, the outer packaging, that would tell. But it did have uh, what seemed to have been a few dents and a few bumps, as you can possibly see by the packaging. It hasn't came through entirely unscathed. There are a few uh, kind of war wounds on the box itself, but nothing too desperate. And the outer packaging wasn't ripped at all. But certainly when we take a closer look inspection, there are some telltale signs, uh, one of which in this corner, there's a little bit of deformation of the, uh, the fins there on the heat stack, which it isn't the end of the world. Ultimately, yeah, if you're a complete purist, you maybe want to get there with a flat-headed screwdriver and maybe bend those back up, but we're not particularly concerned, especially when it costs such a low price. Now, this actually costs, at the moment, around about $20 US, which equates to roughly about £15 UK at the moment, Obviously, take into account uh, import taxes and postage and that kind of stuff, it may differ slightly. And actually, there's a whole bunch of fans based on this particular design, uh, both with, a, there's actually a triple fan setup as well. There's a dual fan without RGB. There's a dual fan with RGB, which is what this one is. And uh, yeah, there's all kinds of weird concoctions that you can have of this particular style. So basically, it comprises, as we can see, there are two radiator fin stacks both of which are roughly about 90 mil squared. Uh, the fan itself is just slightly bigger. There is a slight overhang of the actual cooling fan. The cooling fans are 92 mil with a RGB insert, which runs around the inside, which we'll get some, uh, some B-roll footage of so you can see what that's like. 
One slightly odd thing, which is uh, very common we actually see these days, is the fact that both of the fans, rather than being separate PWM connections, terminate into one PWM 4-pin block, which, for those of you on a budget with a slightly budget board, you may find that absolutely perfect because you've only got one header, but for some people they may prefer to see two connectors. I don't know, again, let us know in the comments which would you prefer, two individual connections or a, a, a combo one like this. I'm guessing really, obviously, if a fan was to fail, then it would be easier to replace one than what it would be to replace both if you have to because of the connections. I guess you could always resolder them if need be. The fin stack itself uh, actually has got a, a relatively good width to it, so it looks like airflow isn't going to be too much of a problem with it. And on the top there, we can see where the six heat pipes come up through. So basically each kind of stack has got three pipes each split across the two. So looking at the bottom there, you can see it's actually been machined particularly well. And removing the, uh, the tape off the top, we can see this is smoother than my head. It really is. And uh, let me tell you, my head is pretty smooth right now. So that is a really good sign. So we're going to get some really good coverage on the CPU. And because of the sheer physical size of this, this is going to cover pretty much the entire section of the heat shield on top of the CPU, especially for AMD processors. For Intel ones, it's going to do it without a shadow of a doubt. But for AMD, yes, that extra wide area is going to dissipate heat. So you've got a little bit more surface area for coverage, which is all good. One thing which I'm not entirely keen on is the, uh, the clip mounting system which is a, a kind of like a hangover from AMD's very early days of socket 939, even, I guess, 754 as well. Some of those early days. So we've got the retention mechanism. So one side hooks over onto your traditional AMD style brackets, which are these ones, which we normally tend to remove off of most systems. And then it loops on the other side. There's a larger thumb press, and then you can push some pressure down. Basically the metal bends and it hooks on. So actually a relatively easy thing to do to actually set up. The actual cold plate as well looks like it's been uh, soldered and pressed in pretty nicely. So it looks like it's going to do a good job. And also as well, there are some little heat fins actually on top of the, uh, the stack itself just to dissipate a little bit extra heat. My concern is that possibly because these are 92 mil fans, they are going to have to spin a little bit quicker in order to push that air through, at least compared with their kind of uh, 120 mil brethren. But hopefully it's not going to be too noisy. It does say in the, the blurb, not on the box because I can't read it, but actually on AliExpress, it does say that it's ultra quiet, silence, high performing and all that kind of usual stuff. So there's only one way to actually validate all that and that is to test the darn thing. So I'm going to go ahead now, stick it in the PC behind me and we're going to compare it against the Fractal S36 radiator, which is in there, which is a 360 mil rad. A tad unfair being that this is essentially a kind of like an eighth of the price of that unit, but well, let's give it a run for its money. So we'll be right back after this. Okay, so we've done our testing and hopefully you've seen some of the uh, the flybys of basically in action, both in its kind of lowest RPM mode and also under a full load. And let me tell you, this thing isn't particularly quiet. Despite what uh, AliExpress may say on the website and what Snowman's advertising may say, it ain't very quiet. So that is the, the first downfall. The biggest downfall for me for this particular device is the actual overhang. So the overhang itself, if you're looking at it from this angle, you can see these are where the heat pipes are. Obviously this is where your CPU is going to be. So the fan is actually going over really, really far. And actually during testing on my own system behind me, I actually had to remove some of the RAM. It physically would not fit with all four sticks of RAM in there. So I basically went down to just one single stick on the end, which clearly isn't the ideal situation. 
so there isn't enough clearance with both of those cooling fans on to enable it to work correctly. Now, if you take off the front fan, it's gonna be absolutely fine. And in some boards, you could probably put the front fan onto the rear section and be absolutely fine there. But with the MSI board there, which is the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, because it's got a relatively chunky VRM heatsink on that back section, again, physically wouldn't fit. It was a little bit too low. So if the heat pipes were a little bit longer, bring it up a little bit higher, it'd be absolutely fantastic. For slightly more, um, say, slightly less well-equipped motherboards, i.e. those without VRM coolers, this is gonna be absolutely fine. And for those that are using lower profile RAM, that is V-cut RAM in there with RGB. So if you used LPX, then there's a slight possibility you could get it underneath there. But again, it is exceptionally tight. But again, you can take the fan off, move it to the back, or just use one fan if you wanted to. Although saying that, you possibly might wanna use both fans because although it is uh, relatively compact, it didn't do an absolutely stellar job. It did okay, don't get me wrong. So we're running with a Ryzen 5 3600. It has got an overclock of, I think it's like 4.1 gigahertz on all the cores. So it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty good. It's gonna give, give it a run for its money. Uh, lowest temperature recorded was around about 33 degrees, which is pretty much in par with most of the other coolers we've seen, especially in that particular setup. This room is relatively warm looking around about 23, 24 degrees as ambient temperature. So yeah, exactly what we'd expect, especially with Ryzen 3000 series processors, they do tend to spike a little bit when precision boost overclocking kicks in and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that is pretty much what I expect to see. It did top out at 69 degrees. Now it didn't get quite to the uh, oh shit moment of when you hit 70 and above. So thumbs up for that, it didn't reach that. So yeah, that is a saving grace. And to be honest with you, with that many heat pipes on the bottom, it's kind of expected. You wouldn't really expect six heat pipe cooler to reach more than that on that particular setup. Again, it's gonna be dependent on what you're gonna use it for. Realistically, I would say personally, if you're looking at one of the snowman coolers and you're trolling around AliExpress and you're looking for something cheap and cheerful, which is just gonna get the job done, um, I would go back to the original snowman. If you uh, look at the link in the video description up there, that is a stellar cooler. It really is for the money. It's a lot more compatible with uh, a lot more cases. The only thing obviously is the height. The where this does shine is the fact that it is relatively compact. Being that it's 92 mil fans, it's a relatively short heat sink stack. So actually uh, it will fit in quite a few places that obviously taller coolers just physically can't. Um, I have seen these quite often actually missold as well. So you look at them, and you look at a picture and it looks like it's a huge, huge cooler. When you actually receive it, it's these kind of smaller fans. So obviously, yeah, do bear that in mind as well. Some of the build quality is not, not brilliant. Trying to push down the fans, actually trying to get the clip on. I did notice I managed to bend some more of these fins. So there is that to look out for. Essentially, it is a cheap and cheerful. And from the B-roll that you've possibly seen already, the RGB effect is a fixed RGB effect. So. It's not gonna please everybody, but certainly for, again, cheap and cheerful builds, it's gonna brighten things up and uh, attract, hopefully, potential buyers. Whether or not I could put up with it myself long-term, I don't know. Obviously, it's gonna take a hell of a lot to dethrone the Fractal S36 in my rig behind me, so that's why I've already taken this out as part of the uh, the testing setup. I don't know, let me know what you think in the video description below and in the comments. Is this something that you would put in your machine would you prefer to just go with the regular snowman with the standard non-RGB fans on there? Do you think that's a better alternative for around about the same kind of money? Um, I think for me personally, I think the 120 mil snowman is the winner, although this certainly does have its uh, use cases. So anyway, sound off in the comments section below. Let me know what you think. Uh, in the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the next snowman review. Thanks for watching.